The federal government has stated that it is probing Governor Amadou Fintiri of Adamawa State. The immediate past governor of Zamfara State, Abdulaziz Yeri, publisher of this day newspaper, Nduka Obiagbena, for allegedly flouting the COVID-19 guidelines at the airport. The Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, said this during the briefing of the Presidential Task Force in COVID-19. He stated that if they were found not culpable after investigation, the government would apologize to them. The minister said the government would not condone any acts of recklessness at the airports. Joining us to discuss this is Wale Shadari, aviation airspot. He joins us via Zoom. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, let's just go straight to it. I'll come to the part about apologizing in a bit. Minister of Aviation says the government is probing uh, Governor Fintiri and the others uh, for flouting airport protocol. The question many are asking is, what is to be probed, really? Why not go ahead and outline sanctions? Thank you very much. Uh, we woke up last week to um, hear the news that uh, former governor of um, um, Zamfara, uh, Zamfara, yes, former governor of Sam Zamfara, governor uh, Yari, Alaji Yari, um, flouted um, uh, the protocol for uh, aviation and security at the airport, at the Kanu airport. It was so serious that um, uh, the governor was alleged, the former governor was alleged to have been so violent. Uh, just a few days after, in Port Harcourt, uh, a sitting governor, Governor Fintiri, was also accused of violating lay down protocol or guidance for aviation uh, regulation. Uh, so we have um, rules that are uh, that guide aviation and um, not only aviation, rules that guide um, COVID-19 on how um, we need to behave and we need to uh, carry out um, our activities at the airport. So it was so bad that um, in Ka Kaduna, uh, a fan official was almost uh, hit by the vehicle or the one uh, the convoy. Mr. Shadari, my, my these question. Are clear these are clear violations. These are clear violations, aviation violation for that matter, because um, aviation has international rules that. Um, uh, that governs it. And for that to happen is really a big violation. But you can't really prosecute a sitting governor because he has immunity. And um, maybe after he leaves office, they can press charges against him. But uh, something also happened today. Uh, his aide released a statement to say that Fan lied, that he never violated uh, any of the protocols. Yes. That in fact, he, they dare Fan to release the uh, footage to show that he never violated that. But a lot of people know that our politicians are like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Fan has also, also issued a statement. A lot of things. Fan has also yeah. issued a statement today, standing by its earlier uh, comment on the matters, insisting that these governors flouted uh, the protocol. So it still goes back to uh, what the Minister of Aviation is saying. He is saying uh, that there should be an investigation. And I'm asking, should we be investigating something that is done in the open and what would be the hesitation by fan in this instance to bring to the fore the video clip that you mentioned yeah i, I think fan would do that because um it is now in the open and the governor has um, denied that he ever violated any uh, protocol or the protocol of the of the of the airport even president buari's um, guideline on uh, covid 19 but be that as it may, I think Fan has evidence to show that the governor allegedly flouted the rule. And you see, I don't know why we keep on um, arguing over matters. Uh, mistake, mistake has been made. I think the best thing for anybody to do is to apologize and we move on. Because if you look at it, yeah, uh, uh, these guidelines are, are made 
there are even international guidelines that are de domesticated in Nigeria because Nigeria is a, is a part of a global aviation community. So we have the International Civil Aviation Organization that is the regulatory body for aviation industry in the whole world. It is an arm of the United, uh, United Nations. We also have the uh, w, uh, World Health Organization, WHO, which is also an arm of the uh, United Nations, who have come together to say, OK, we need to, to curtail the spread of uh, COVID-19. And these guidelines are have been domesticated in Nigeria for uh, us to be safe. Mr. Shadari, I'm us. sorry to that interject was, again. That, that was uh, one of the reasons uh, the airports were, uh, were open. I'm sorry to interject again, but, but, but because of time constraint, I need to push in as much questions and get some uh, clarity as much as possible. You talked about apologizing. There are downsides to this. If they apologize, they're admitting um, that they actually committed an offense, um, how would that play out for them politically? Wouldn't that be damaging? Do you see that happening? You, uh, uh, thank you very much. You have a point there. But I think there's nothing wrong for somebody to admit that, oh, I made a mistake. And uh, rather than put you down, it will further elevate you. It will further show that um, you are remorseful about what you have done. This is not politics. We shouldn't be talking politics now. We should be talking about how to ensure that we comply with all laid down rules. It doesn't matter if we are wrong. It doesn't matter if mistakes have been made. The, the, the most important thing is just to apologize and say, oh, I didn't know, or my aides didn't follow what they are supposed to do. We apologize, and a lot of Nigerians will even applaud it and even clap for you that you have done what is um, you are supposed to do. But coming out to you know deny that it ever happened, and I'm sure we have not had the last um, um, of this matter. Fan is going to defend itself. Fan may even release the uh, the footage to show that the governor and his aide actually violated all the laws, all the known laws. Uh, uh, guiding aviation and COVID-19. All right, let, let's talk about the former governor, Yeri, describing himself as a VIP. We know that he is. Uh, and um, the alleged push of an officer who wanted to disinfect uh, his luggage. The question is, mm. should VIPs be exempted even in a pandemic that we are in now? I, I, I think the law is very clear. If you look at the guidelines, Nice. Uh, I'm sure you have a copy of it. Maybe you just uh, look through that guidelines where the, even the Minister of Aviation, uh, Senator Hadi Surika, came out to say no VIPs will be allowed into restricted areas. No VIP will be allowed, or anybody, not just that, no, not VIP, A's to VIPs, will be allowed to go beyond the a restricted areas. We have restricted areas in the airport that you shouldn't go beyond. And this is very clear. It was, it was in the newspaper. It was run on TV. It but, was there are those, on but there are those I don't who know say... Why there are those who say that FAN created this kind of behavior by awarding them VIP, uh, a special recognition and treatment prior to COVID-19. And they're saying, why are they complaining now um, that, you know, they're getting a backlash for uh, something that was a practice before? Uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong. We, are, we have category of people that are classified as VIPs, VVIPs, yes, all over the world, they are giving that um, uh, exclusive right to use certain uh, parts of the airport, uh, restricted areas of the airport, all over the world. It's not only limited to Nigeria, but we have a new normal. Things have changed. So we need to comply with the rules. We need to comply with the law to ensure that we are all safe. Because the truth of the matter is that COVID-19 is real, and a lot of people have contact, uh, contracted this disease, and a lot of people have died. If we continue in the way we have been doing things before, th there's a new normal. We just need to comply. We just need to conform with the rules for everybody to be safe. It doesn't take anything. I don't know why, you know, in Nigeria, we find it difficult to comply with the simplest of laws, simplest of rules. We just feel, oh, I'm a governor. I'm a top businessman. I can do this. I can do that. Doing such, we help to endanger the lives of a lot of people. And that is why we have these um, rules, the guidelines on what to do and what not to do 
at the airport. It's very, very simple. Let us just comply. Uh, the governor of um, on those state, um, um, or your state, um, um, Governor Mackinde, was also part of the, the entering, but he complied with the rule. He submitted himself to um, to all the airport's rules. And we have the video where he subjected himself to, you know, um, and temperature check, filling of forms and all the other things that were needed to ensure that they comply with that, that, that protocol. But Governor Yari and, <coughs> excuse me, Governor Yari yes, and, as Governor Yari and uh, Governor Fintiri didn't do that. And I don't think Frank would deliberately want to accuse them of doing the wrong thing when in natural fact they have not done anything. Something was wrong and we expected them to say, oh, I'm so sorry. It doesn't take anything from anybody to say, I'm sorry. We all make mistakes. We all um, do not know all the rules or all the regulations. But when we are found wanting, uh, 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 it demands that we, we, we just apologize and say we are sorry. That all also right. makes a man rather than denying and rather than escalating the matter and making it look as if Pan wanted to just criminalize them. You know, Mr. Shadari, I have this very fantastic question about leadership and how this plays into it. But when you keep talking about apologizing as, you know, uh, some would say that is actually um, a good characteristic for a leader uh, to have. Um, let's just leave yeah. that because we're out of time. I want to just take your quick thoughts on this. Um, Fan has issued a fresh statement, and in that statement today said that either these VIPs behave or they risk being denied access to airport facilities. I want to know your thoughts oh, yeah. about this. Is it yes, possible yes, that Fan will go through with this should it get to it? No, no, no. No, no, they can do that. You have a lot of ways where you can punish people who have not shown any remorse. One of it is that fun can actually... Okay, we seem to have just uh, lost uh, Mr. Shadari. Uh, um, um, access to air travel. But, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, yes, the line went me? off for a bit. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, what I'm trying to say is that Fan can, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead quickly. Okay, Fan can actually deny them access to air travel because what they need to do is just to submit their names to the airlines and they'll compare the airlines not to pick them or anybody related to them. So it's one of the reasons you can really um, uh, punish them, in quote, by ensuring that they keep to these um, um, guidelines. There are other measures that you can take, but this is the most effective measure you can take. I doubt if any uh, any governor will want to travel from Lagos to Abuja by road, or Lagos to Kaduna, uh, uh, Kaduna to Abuja, uh, Kaduna to Meduguri by road. So you can actually deny them. They will feel it more if you deny them access to air travel. I think that's the most efficient way you can deny them. Mm -hmm access to uh, 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 um, aviation or access to, uh, to you know, boarding flights uh, to any destination in Nigeria. So All it's right. one of the effective ways. We, other, we, we also have so many other ways that they can, yeah, they uh, can measures they can apply uh, right. to ensure that these guys conform to uh, the, the, the rules. Let's see what you know, happens. In Nigeria, we find it difficult to comply with the simplest of rules. Let, let's so, see what happens know, with if the... If it gets to that level, fan we will the be stick. The NCA we also will the be stick. Let, let's see what happens with the investigation. Because if the minister says that if the allegation turns out to be wrong, that we will apologize to um, uh, the governors and the ex-governor, uh, but he, he, yeah. he, he, he was a bit uh, not too firm about um, what the punishment would be. He did allude to the fact that they would be punished, but uh, will that happen? Do you see that happening? And like I told you, I said, yeah, the governors have immunity. There's no way you can uh, sue the governors uh, when, they are, uh, when they still hold offices. The best thing you can do, like I have said, is to ensure that you deny them assets. But it's going to be very difficult. We know the power play, we know the power game in Nigeria. It's not going to be that easy. 
because these people can go to court to challenge. I, I don't know. They can't be sued. I doubt if because they can of the sue people. All right, <laughs> Mr. Wale Shadari. But, but I know it's not going to be easy. It's not as easy as we're saying. I, I must I think say, I'm, I'm afraid. The issue will have to be resolved. <laughs> resolved between, you know, maybe political solution to ensure that these governors or VIPs comply. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Shadari, for your time and the insight you've provided uh, on this conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, for having me. <laughs> <laughs> it's our pleasure. We understand. All right. We'll go on a short break. And when we come back, I'll give you my take. Do stay with us. The activities of the Niger Delta Development Commission continues. We watch. The only honest hope I hold is that the scrutiny and interests generated will be strong enough to ensure Nigerians see the outcome of the House of Representatives Committee investigation and in the near future, the forensic audit authorized by Mr. President. I just hope it doesn't go the way of the Farouk Lawal Committee and subsidy on petroleum price until then. We will continue to carry you along with conversations that will enhance your understanding of the events as they unfold. Thank you for watching the program tonight. Until next time, stay safe and avoid acts inimical to the development of this great country of ours. Bye for now.